Welcome to CalicoCon Cloud Native Security Summit 2022. I am Park Goswami, Customer Enablement Engineer working at Cloudera and a Calico Big Cat. Uh, that is a community ambassador for Project Calico. I am a free and open source uh, software enthusiast and mostly work with containers and networking. In my free time, I also regularly host meetups and uh, interact with uh, the community while contributing to open source in uh, any possible way. Today. Uh, we'll be talking about managing IP addresses in Kubernetes. Let's dive into the agenda. In this agenda, we will start with the Kubernetes networking model. Uh, we will try to understand what uh, CNI is and uh, how ports get IP address. And then we'll move on to uh, the introduction to uh, what Calico IP address, basically how Calico approaches IP address management and what uh, Calico IPM is. We'll discuss what causes IP exhaustion uh, and uh, what are the consequences of uh, IP exhaustion. And we'll see a use case where uh, how Calico CNI solves IP address exhaustion on Microsoft AKS. Before we start with today's topic, let us briefly try to go through the uh, basics of container uh, networking, that is, uh, what is Kubernetes networking model and uh, how it works. Now, uh, the Kubernetes networking model in itself uh, demands its own session. So we will try to stick to the crux of it and uh, do a quick uh, walkthrough. Uh, we, we know that Kubernetes was built to run uh, distributed systems over a cluster of machines. Uh, the very nature of distributed systems makes uh, networking a central and necessary component of uh, Kubernetes deployment. Understanding these, uh, this Kubernetes networking model will allow us to correctly run, monitor, troubleshoot our uh, applications running on top of Kubernetes. Networking is a vast space uh, with a lot of mature technologies. For people unfamiliar with this landscape, uh, this can be a bit uncomfortable because most people have existing preconceived notions about networking. There are a, a lot of uh, both new and old uh, concepts to understand. Maybe a non-exhaustive list might include technologies like uh, network namespace, uh, virtual interfaces, IP forwarding, network address, translation. Having said that, networking is central part of Kubernetes, but it can be a bit challenging to understand uh, exactly how it is expected to work. There are five distinct networking problems to address. First is highly coupled container to container communication. Uh, this is uh, solved by pods and coalesced communication. Uh, typically, we view network communications in a virtual machine as interacting directly uh, with an Ethernet device. In reality, the situation is more subtle than that. Uh, in Linux, each running process communicates within a network namespace that provides a logical networking stack with its own routes, firewall rules, and uh, network devices. In essence, a network namespace provides a brand new uh, network stack for all the processes within the namespace. In terms of containers, uh, a pod is a group of uh, containers, uh, we can say that, and that uh, share a network namespace. Containers within a pod all uh, have the same IP address and port space assigned through the uh, network namespace assigned to the pod. And we can find each other via localhost since they reside in the same namespace. Pod to pod communications using IP. Uh, within the same cluster. In Kubernetes, every pod has a real IP address. Each pod communicates with other pods uh, using that IP address. If two different pods within the cluster or within the node or maybe within different nodes want to communicate, it should communicate using an IP address. Pods to service uh, communication within the cluster. Kubernetes service manages the state of a set of pods, allowing you to track a set of pod IP addresses uh, that are dynamically changing over time. Services act as an abstraction over pods uh, and assign a single virtual IP address to a group of pod IP addresses. Any traffic address to this uh, virtual IP will be routed to the set of pods that are associated with the virtual IP. This allows the set of pods associated with the service to change at any time. Clients only need to know the service's uh, virtual IP, which does not change. Next, any external component also should be able to talk uh, to the Kubernetes service, which is ingress, etc. And also, Kubernetes networking model is saying that there is a 
shared namespace since this containers are linux based so uh, this container sh uh, should share network namespace this is about the kubernetes networking model in brief in order to implement a kubernetes networking model kubernetes introduced a cni container networking interface uh, rather a container network interface which is nothing but a common set of standards specifications libraries etc which is managed by cncf cni basically is a common specs for writing cni plugins uh, now why do we need cni plugins it is basically needed to configure network interface since the uh, containers are linux based we need network interface in linux containers that's what the cni will basically try to solve so the plugin specification defines an interface for configuring the network provisioning uh, the ip addresses and maintaining connectivity with multiple hosts now if you ask by whom cni is used is it is mostly used by container runtimes such as kubernetes podman or cryo there are many more cni supported runtimes and if it is not supported yes uh, there are some plugins that are available uh, like calico for example kubernetes cni is required so as we know that both linux container and container networking technology are continuing to evolve uh, to meet the needs of applications running in various environments and clusters so the cni is an initiative of the cloud native computing foundation which specifies the configuration of linux container network interfaces cni was actually created uh, to make networking solutions integratable with a range of container orchestration systems and runtimes instead of making the networking solutions pluggable it defines a common interface standard for both the networking and container execution layers cni also focuses on the connectivity of container networks and the removal of allocated resources upon the termination of containers this focus makes cni specifications simple and allows uh, them to be widely adopted so how does a cni work it's a bit simple not that much uh, difficult to understand so let's try, let's say that a cube api server is looking to talk to a particular node take any node basically your node will have host network namespace cube api server will talk to kubelet that's because the uh, the uh, cube api server's first point of contact is this uh, kubelet kubelet will talk to the uh, to the crr plugin container d is one of the uh, crr plugin uh, this container d will go and create a pod network namespace cri will uh, also trigger the cni uh this cni will uh, take care of a uh, uh, networking solution such as linking the pod network namespace and uh, host network namespace adding routes etc so this uh, cni's job is to take care of the networking solutions while cri's job is to take care of the container specific solutions this is basically how uh, a cni work in the previous slide we saw uh, what a cni is why it is used and how does it work in this slide uh, let's uh, try to understand that what exactly a cni do basically cni takes care of uh, connecting the pod into the network meaning in the pod network once a pod is created uh, how the pod will communicate to a network and api server how the pod will communicate with other pods service etc is something taken care uh, of by cni how will it take care of it by ip address management which is also the topic of this session managing ip addresses in kubernetes uh, so assigning ip address is a part of cni's job cni will insert network interface uh, between the container and uh, as well as the network uh, namespace cni will make sure every pod will get one ip address cni will help create isolation pods are like like a small replica of virtual machines uh, where they run in their own namespace cni will isolate uh, the pod using the network policies pods are uh, a, a very lightweight virtual machine which uh, runs linux namespace when used with kubernetes cni can integrate smoothly with the kubelet to enable the use of overlay or underlay network to automatically configure the network between pods overlay network encapsulate network traffic using a virtual interface such as virtual extensible lan uh, or vxlan underlay network work at the physical level 
and comprises of uh, switches and routers. So once you have specified the type of uh, network configuration type, the container runtime defines the network that container join. Uh, the runtime adds the interface to the container namespace via a call to the CNI plugin and allocates the connected subnetwork routes via calls to the uh, IP address management, that is uh, IPAM plugin. Container networking on a single node or a one node cluster. Uh, so given the network namespaces that isolate each port to their own networking stack, uh, virtual Ethernet devices that uh, connect each namespace to the root namespace, and a bridge that connects namespaces together, we are finally ready to send traffic uh, between ports, but on the same node. So this is a worker node where the uh, bottom portion is the host network namespace, whereas the first half portion is the pod network namespace. Every node will have a certain CIDR range assigned to it. The host network will have a ETH0 interface. There are two different containers in the same single node. This container will have individual IP addresses and every container will have interface ETH0. The VF pair, uh, virtual Ethernet pair, will be connected uh, to the CNI bridge, CNI0 bridge. This bridge will also have uh, one IP address. Uh, by using this bridge, it will connect uh, to these three dots. These three dots can be a cube proxy, cube DNS, uh, etc. There can be many more interfaces in between. The communication uh, then will take place internally within the node itself. Now, Kubernetes networking model dictates that pods must be reachable by their IP address across uh, the nodes. That is, the IP address of a pod is always visible to other pods in the network and uh, each pod views its own IP address as the same as how other pods see it. We now turn to the problem of uh, routing traffic between pods on different nodes uh, in the next slide. Having worked out how to route packets between pods in the same node, we move on to routing traffic between pods on different nodes. In case of two different nodes, node 1 and node 2, whenever you install any one of the CNI, that CNI comes up with a VXLAN. Uh, VXLAN is an IP in IP uh, where uh, one IP packet is encapsulated in another IP packet. If uh, container 1 wants to talk to container 2, then the traffic will traverse from a pair CNI bridge. This will have an IP through the VXLAN and through this ETH0, uh, the communication will take place. There will be an overlay network also, which will be used by the Calico. That's basically how the multi-container communication will happen. And this is an explanation brief. How do pods get assigned with an IP address? Say this is a master node and this is a worker node. A uh, master node will have a cube API server uh, and a CNI plugin is installed. On the worker node, there will be a host network namespace by default. Now, let's say we execute a command to get a pod, something like uh, kubectl run nginx pod hyphen hyphen image is equal to uh, nginx. Uh, the command then calls the kubelet. Kubelet will call a CRI plugin, a container runtime interface. Uh, this plugin is the container D as we discussed uh, in one of the previous slides. Now, this uh, CRI plugin will use the container D and will create a pod network. By pod network, I mean only the network namespace and C groups. Next, CRI plugin will trigger CNI to establish a network between the pod network and the host network. It will create a VF pair, virtual Ethernet pair attaching one end to the pod network namespace and other end to the host network namespace. Along with that, it will add a route to the host network namespace. This route is added so that the host knows uh, there is a route established. The reason being creating one pod in this case and what if I create 100 pods, then 100 respective namespaces will be created. Even then, in, in case of that many pods, the host will be aware of that and that's how it works. Moving on ahead, the uh, CNI plugin will have a, a CRDS, like a bridge, IPAM, etc., which are installed by default. So the plugin, by using CRDS from its pool, will pick up one IP address and returns it to the CRI plugin. 
by the way before returning the ips to cri plugin index ids will be created in the pod uh, once the ip address is written and uh, cri creates index a pod specific namespace will be shared and uh, the sandbox container will be created for the first time after that the kubelet will instruct the cri to pull the actual image of uh, nginx if the image is not present locally it will be pulled from registry if it is uh, present locally container is created and it will be attached to its uh, particular namespace namespace in the sense the pod specific namespace the ip address is assigned to the sandbox container which is created by the cri cni's job in this case is to take care of the network routes ip address management ipam is an integrated suite of tools to enable end to end planning uh, it also helps in uh, deploying and managing and monitoring of your ip addresses uh, or ip address infrastructure uh, ipam automatically discovers ip address infrastructure servers and domain name system uh, dns servers on your network and enables you to manage them from a central interface kubernetes uh, uses ipam plugins to allocate and manage ip addresses assigned to pods different ipam plugins provide different uh, feature sets calico provides its own ipam plugin called calico ipam or calico hyphen ipam which is designed to work well with uh, calico and includes a number of features uh, different uh, ipam techniques provide different feature sets calico's ipam uh, provide additional ip allocation efficiency and flexibility compared to other our ip address management approaches uh, the calico ipam plugin uh, uses calico's ip pool resource to control how ip addresses are allocated to pods uh, within the cluster this is the, the default plugin used by most calico installations uh, by default uh, calico uses a single ip pool for the entire kubernetes pod cidr but you can divide the pod cidr into several pools you can assign separate ip pools to particular selections of nodes or to teams users or uh, applications within a cluster using namespaces uh, you can control which pools calico uses for each pod using node selectors and annotation on the pod's namespace or an annotation on the pod uh, calico also supports the host local ipam plugin uh, we will see that in the next slide let's quickly go over as to how calico's ipam works at a high level uh, its primary goal is to uh, provide efficient usage of the cluster's ip address space in a way that that's flexible enough to meet a variety of deployment architectures uh, at a high level calico uh, uses ip pools to define what ip ranges are valid to use for allocating pod ip addresses ip pools are configured by cluster administrators applied using calico ctl if uh, using calico's overlay mode they can be any private network ip range uh, but many users don't use an overlay uh, however and in that case the ip pools must use addresses that are available on the underlying network environment uh, within calico's ipam engine this uh, ip pools are subdivided into smaller chunks called blocks uh, which are then assigned to a, a particular node in the cluster uh, blocks are uh, allocated dynamically to nodes as the number of running pod uh, pods grows or shrinks in particular this means that calico is much more efficient in its use of uh, ip addresses when only a few pods are running uh, on a node and at the same time doesn't impose any upper limit on the uh, number of pods per node the host local plugin uh, which we gave a quick introduction in the last slide uh, it is a simple uh, ip address management plugin uh, uses predetermined cidr statistically uh, allocated to each node in order to choose addresses uh, from pods one set cidr for a node cannot be modified pods can be assigned addresses only from within the cidr allocated to the node calico can use uh, the host local appm plugin uh, using the node.spec.pod cidr field in the kubernetes api to determine the cidr to use for each node 
the host local appm plugin is primarily used by other methods of routing port traffic from one host to another for example it is used when installing calico for policy enforcement uh, flannel networking as well as uh, when using calico in aks azure kubernetes service or google kubernetes engine that is gke ip exhaustion ipv4 in particular is a, a problem resulting from the unanticipated popularity of the internet at the time of its creation it is a, a depletion of so ip ip exhaustion is basically the depletion of available ip ipv4 addresses uh, for connected device now beginning in the early 1980s each computer was assigned a unique public ip address consisting of four groups of eight bits or 32 bits in total uh, the standard called uh, ipv4 uh, resulted in 4 billion different values at that time this was the supply obviously seemed inexhaustible uh, but by the late 1980s it was already clear that even a pool this large would eventually run out uh, with the rapid expansion of uh, internet users always on device devices like mobile device uh, and iot the time is now upon us uh, ipv4 exhaustion poses critical problems for internet users and uh, service providers that depend on ipv4 any shortage or delay in ip address assignment to a device from a network can result in the degradation of even outright denial of service to the subscribed device managing uh, ip addresses is an essential part of container networking it is very often that users overlook this aspect when planning their applications networking requirement especially for those small uh, clusters uh, with a limited number of workloads having said that businesses are bound to grow and this growth leads to uh, bigger clusters and more, more workloads which causes ips to become a scarce commodity uh, for example when uh, the user uses pod ip addresses uh, that can be routed outside the cluster the ip address must be unique across the network at large different ip address ranges also known as cidr uh, classless interdomain routing are needed for pods in each clusters when running multiple clusters if the quantity of ip addresses is uh, limited the user has to allocate and budget this uh, ip addresses regularly when users exhaust the available ips it limits the uh, application scale and creates management overhead further uh, unexpected and uh, non budgeted demand for uh, ips to address a surge in application usage may also cause the sudden unavailability of the application in the last few slides we saw what ipm is we understood what calico ipm is tried to discuss the causes for uh, ip exhaustion and what are its consequences uh, in this last slide of the session uh, we will uh, see a use case how calico cni tries to solve ip address exhaustion on microsoft aks now uh, cloud native applications running on kubernetes rely on container network plugins to establish workload communications uh, while Azure Kubernetes Service, uh, AKS, provides several supported network options, KubeNet and Azure CNI, uh, that addresses the needs of uh, most deployments. Uh, Microsoft recently introduced the ability to bring your own networking solution called BYO CNI. It helps uh, users address more advanced networking requirements. This uh, new feature enables AKS customers to run calico networking on aks with uh, calico's appm capabilities uh, users can address their scale availability and management issues related to ip addresses calico's ipm allows users to stretch ip resources as much as possible by providing private networks within their cluster calico uses uh, ip pools to define which ip ranges are valid to use for allocating pod ip addresses uh, these pools are configured by the administrator. Uh, when using Calico's overlay mode, pools can be any private network uh, IP range. IP pools are also divided into blocks, uh, which are then assigned to particular nodes in the cluster. Blocks are allocated dynamically to nodes as the number of running pods grows or shrinks. This ensures uh, efficient use of IP addresses uh, when only a few pods are running on a node and also eliminates any upper limit on the number of pods per node 
due to constrained number of uh, available IPs. To top it off, uh, Calico's uh, does IP allocation automatically, thus eliminating the scale and manageability issues related to IP exhaustion. Well, we have reached the end of the session uh, where we started off by uh, understanding the basics of container networking model, rather Kubernetes networking model. Then we uh, tried to understand what CNI is and how exactly pods uh, get assigned with uh, IP addresses. Then we got introduced to Calico IPAM and the challenge of IP exhaustion followed by what, what are the consequences of uh, IP exhaustion. And at the last, try to understand uh, a use case where how uh, Calico CNI solves uh, IP address exhaustion on Microsoft AKS. Thank you for attending this session and I hope you are enjoying the rest of the summit. Cloud-native applications can't be secured with the traditional security tools. You need a more active and granular level of security. Calico Cloud is an active cloud-native application protection platform that detects, prevents, and mitigates breaches in cloud-native applications. Let's look at how to secure your cloud-native environment at build time with Calico's container security. At build time, we want to make sure that images that the development team provides are clean and without major vulnerabilities or misconfigurations. All image registries are auto-populated and continuously scanned by Calico's scanning engine. I can also manually add new registries. It's very easy for me to see the results of the last scan from the Scan Results page. Pass-Fail is color-coded with specific scores. Details about each vulnerability that impacts each image are available on the right side. I can control which images can be displayed to my environment using admission control policies. I am only allowing images with pass or warn scan results. I have also enforced an upper limit for the age of a scan result. Now, if any application developer attempts to deploy an image that doesn't pass the security criteria, it will automatically be blocked. Once you have the admission policies in place, you may come across a situation where the application developer is telling you that a particular vulnerability does not impact their code and the way in which they are using the affected library. In this case, you need to create an exception. Calico Cloud offers a number of options to scope the exception to a specific image version, any version of this image, or any image. In addition to scanning and assessment of images, I must ensure the Kubernetes environment is also secure and does not have any misconfigurations. Calico helps you continuously assess your Kubernetes configuration using compliance reports that assess your configuration against CIS benchmarks. I scheduled my CIS benchmark report to run every 24 hours. The number of nodes passing or failing the CIS benchmark tests is color-coded. And here are the top failed tests. I can also download the full report to get more insight on each test and how to mitigate its risk. At this stage, I have scanned all my images allow the deployment of only those that pass the security requirements. And I have also assessed my deployment environment against 